Hi folks, thanks for joining me here on RTC TV4. Scott Sager with you. We've got Brian Johnson in the studio today. Brian is the Development Director for the Fulton County Community Foundation, which is of course part of the Northern Indiana Community Foundation. We've done this show for a number of years at the radio station. Yeah. We brought Brian into the studio and uh, we're looking forward to kind yeah. of a new launch, if you will. Yes. So welcome. New, new setting. Well, thank you for having me today. My pleasure. Now, how long have you been with the Community Foundation, Brian? I've been with the Community Foundation since 2007. 2007. So, so a few years. Holy it's been, cow, that's it's right. It's been a good, good fit, yeah. and I've enjoyed it and get to work with a lot of good people. Absolutely. Now, I so, know Brian personally, and some of you folks might not. You're actually from the Midwest, but a little further west, I right? I am. Grew up in Iowa, and so... But Indiana is very similar to Iowa, just a, a very friendly and welcoming community. Absolutely. Uh, like I grew up in. So. Absolutely. And uh, a, a good uh, community citizen here. Brian's been a member of the Baptist Church here in Rochester. Yeah. You've led a number of things there. You and yeah. your wife still singing, I assume. Yes. Yep. Great. Yep. How old's your little one? We have two, um, one that's nine and one that's seven. So a two lot of little fun. Ones, two boys. Nine and seven. <laughs> and uh, Rhonda's got her hands full there. She does. Too. Excellent. She does. Excellent. A lot well, of fun. Brian's doing great work. Uh, Jay Albright is your director over there yes. now. I've uh, been there for a few years. Doing great things. All I ever see is huge numbers coming out of the yeah. Community Foundation. Well, we're, we're really blessed. The community that we have is very supportive. Yeah. And so when needs arise, we always see our community um, rally to meet those needs. So it's been very, very encouraging to see that. And not every community around the state has that but right. we just we have such a wonderful community and a giving community that really supports needs yeah. and and comes to the rescue when we have needs absolutely now i worked for the community foundation down in bloomington the monroe county for a few years when i moved back to rochester i was just amazed at the dollar amount of giving in fulton yeah. county yeah. as opposed to a much, much larger county down there in Monroe County. And yeah. Fulton County is pretty darn close. Yeah, it's very it's very encouraging. And I think we just have that attitude in our community that we can do it. Yeah. And yeah. Um, it's, it's a lot of hard work to get to that point, but it's it's really encouraging to see how things are supported. Absolutely. And giving back. It's all about yeah. giving back to your community. Um, you know, I harp on it. I preach it here on RTC TV4, but you're a living example of somebody who gives their time and energy and you're managing all these funds for all these folks who have yes. who've accomplished and they want to give back. And one thing about endowment funds that um, I, I think kind of slips under the radar, they are permanent funds. Yes. Um, yeah. They make interest every year and that interest continues to accrue. Yeah. And that's, and that's the beauty of it. I mean, we're 2018 we celebrated 25 years yeah. as an organization and some of those gifts that are earning for this year were given in 2018 2017 but some of them were given in 1994 right and those gifts are still working for our community yeah. the initial gift hasn't been spent the earnings are what go back to make grants and so the beauty of that is 10 years down the road we're going to be having the same conversation saying these dollars that were given in 1994 are being used today to make grants and scholarships it's in our community. So it just, really good things. Yeah, it just perpetuates itself and yeah, continues it to. Does. So, well, you've got some things to talk yeah, about today. We, we've got a few things going on right now. Okay. Um, wanted to let everybody know that we have our scholarship applications available. Great. Um, the deadline is coming up. Okay. Um, that is March first. Is this for graduating seniors? This is for graduating seniors. Okay. Not just um, from Rochester. No, this is this includes Fulton County residents. Um, include students at the different schools, okay. um, primarily Rochester, Caston, and Tippecanoe Valley, okay. but we do have some that are offered um, for students at like Argus mm -hmm. and um, Winnemac. We have some residents that cross county lines to go to school. Gotcha. Um, so I'd encourage kids, if, if you're getting ready to graduate, take a look at those. We have a list and we'll give information about how to qualify for those okay. so you'll know um, what you would be eligible for, mm -hmm. um, but I encourage you to take a look at that mm -hmm. um, because it does take some time. Okay. Um, some of the pieces that are included in that also include letters of recommendation. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing that I always encourage students, give the person that you're asking for a letter of recommendation some time. Don't ask them on February 28th to write a letter by March 1st right. um, because they do have to take some time and think about that. and. 
Um, there's a there's a process that they go through as far as emailing in that right. letter of recommendation. So okay. um, think about that. Um, we have about 50 scholarships wow. that go to different things, anywhere from um, obviously agriculture is an important part of our community, mm -hmm. um, things like nursing, business, sports, athletics, yep. um, different fields of study, different involvement during music. the high school, mm -hmm. music, mm -hmm. um, art, mm -hmm. Um, all of these diverse things. Doesn't so, matter what kind of kid you are yeah, or what kind of kid yeah. you've got, there's probably a scholarship yes. to go with so, it. Right? So take a look at that. Um, that application is all done online. Okay. Um, you can find it on our website, nicf.org, okay. and click on the Fulton County Scholarship link, and you can find the application on there. Yeah. The web's made it a thousand times it, easier. It has. Hasn't it? It, it makes it so much simpler and and we can see and encourage students to complete that application. So, But if you do have problems with that, Allison Heidi is our scholarship coordinator. Excellent. And don't hesitate to give us a call. Okay. Um, we can work through those details because every once in a while you have a glitch. Yep. And, but we want to make sure and help students apply for those scholarships that they're, they're eligible Excellent. for. So. Excellent. So, again, it's NICF.org. And uh, go in there, click on Fulton County, start to look through the application. If you have questions about the application, give them a call or shoot yeah. them an email. Allison yeah. Heidi's there to really make sure this goes smoothly for you yes. and questions get answered, yeah. right? And we, we hope we can help some kids yeah. um, afford school. Yeah. That's... Now, every year you do the awards ceremony at the various high schools. We do. And I'm seeing those numbers creeping up and up and up, almost $200,000 yes. it yeah. seems. Actually, this last year with between the scholarships that we administer and also the Lilly um, mm. Endowment Community Scholarship, right. um, we were able to award over two hundred thousand okay. dollars in scholarships to local students. You crossed the threshold. We crossed that threshold, so it's it's That's amazing. Um, it's very encouraging, and I always tell people if you have the view that kids are the problem with our society today, <laughs> come see me. Let's yeah. talk about getting you on a scholarship yeah. committee because you're going to walk out of that yeah. meeting. Very encouraged yes. just to see what these kids have done absolutely already, and and how they're going to impact our community and the world in the future. So absolutely, it's neat to see that. I so. just have to go back to this again. You're talking a community of our size, twenty thousand roughly, yeah. um, in Fulton County, have given millions of dollars that end up being over two hundred thousand dollars going yes. out. Just that's not grants and you know, to build a sidewalk, that's just for scholarships for these yeah. kids in our community. I've never seen a community embrace this so much. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah, it's it's really encouraging to see that. So. Excellent. Excellent. So. We've got a couple other um, applications that are available okay. right now. Um, the Fulton County Women's Giving Circle. Yes. That is a group that was formed in 2000, started in 2010 and formed in 2011. Mm -hmm. um, they make grants to community projects. Um, we have a small application, again, that's on our website. Mm -hmm. um, and they're four projects that a few hundred dollars to a few thousand dollars. Okay. Um, we filmed this that, one time over at Tippecanoe Valley. Uh, you were over at their community center. Yes. And uh, we, it, it was a very interesting process to see how yes. everyone presented themselves yeah. and then um, a decision was made. But yeah. to know that this was this group of women coming together from yes. the community, creating this uh, Women's Giving Circle, and then giving out money. Yeah, so we have about 80 members. 80 now. Um, last year we were able to give out a little over $6,000 wow. in grants. That's great. So what happens is it's actually the members that decide. Okay. We accept grant applications. We have a group of members that narrow down mm -hmm. those selection to some finalists. Yep. And then those finalists come in and present the project and then all of the women that are members vote on which project is funded. So it's really, a, it's really a community group yeah. that makes these selections and, and it's neat to see not only the awards but the knowledge that's shared yep. and then um, the opportunity for members to get involved with these organizations yep. as well so that it creates ripples throughout the community. It does. And it's, it's a really neat thing. This group, um, they members donate $120 a year. Okay, so each. that was one of the things. To, yes. to become a member of the Women's Giving yes. Circle, it's $120, $120 a year. That's $10 a month, yes. really. That's, that's the goal. Make it affordable Absolutely. for for everybody. And then you pull all that together. We pull all that. Which, Actually, we split it. Okay. Half of it goes to an endowment fund. Okay. Which that endowment fund has actually grown to, um, it's almost to $50,000 now. <laughs> and 
then in the just other, a few short in just years, just a few short years, and then the other half um, goes to make grants for the following year. Excellent. So it's kind of neat when I when I see um, my wife is a member, mm -hmm. and the hundred and twenty dollars that we give every year turns into five, six, seven thousand yeah. dollars a year in grants. It's yeah. really neat to see. Incredible. how that happens and, and part of a group. So, oh, that's fun. So those those grant applications are available on our website. Do we click the Fulton um, County again? You click on the Fulton County and there's a page that, that deals specifically with grants. Great. Um, those applications are due April 1st. Okay. Um, the awards will be made um, early June okay. on that. But um, if you have a project that impacts Fulton County, mm -hmm. um, we'd love to love to see that application for that. Excellent. So. And again, if they have questions over the uh, Women's Giving Circle grants, yes. they can contact the Community contact Foundation. Contact Community well. Foundation. Corinne Beckner Lucas is our Corinne's associate director there. and Excellent. she administers the grant program. So either her or myself um, and we can we can answer questions and, and help work with you um, to get those applications completed because we're just looking for some good projects. That's fantastic. And, and again, all of those projects help Fulton County. Yes, so, very much so. Good stuff. Um, something else that we have is the Adaptive Housing Grant. Okay. Um, this is a newer program. Um, a few years ago, some of the veterans organizations approached us. Um, it was really led by the American Legion, Post 36 here in town. Okay. Um, they wanted to help veterans who may have some physical abilities that are changing as they're aging, okay. uh, make some adaptations to their homes so gotcha. that they can stay in their homes, whether it be something like a ramp, ramps and rails, whether it be and... widening doorways mm -hmm. or accessorizing restroom uh -huh. um, fixtures to be able to stay in their home. So it's gotcha. been a really neat program. Um, they have, um, have granted to a couple veterans in the area, but always looking for applications for that. So if um, some of the qualifications obviously have to be a Fulton County resident. Mm -hmm. um, the veteran must have been discharged under honorable terms. Okay. Um, have a have a copy of their DD form two fourteen. Okay. Veterans will understand okay. what that means. DD two fourteen. Um, but that that's something that the American Legion and um, some of the other organizations came together to support and. Um, we have those applications on our website. Okay. Um, that actually ends up going back to the American Legion, the application once it's completed. Mm -hmm. But um, if there are veterans that may need um, some changes made to their home mm -hmm. just to facilitate them be able to stay mm -hmm. there, um, that's what that fund is for. So, oh, a neat um, idea. Thank you to the American Legion oh, for gosh, yes. spearheading this um, this program. And I know the VFW has been supportive and just mm -hmm. so many throughout our community have gotten involved with this program. So you bring people together, Brian. We, we have people approach <laughs> us and, and say, hey, we have this idea, and we say, we'll help you figure out how we can do this. That's so. fantastic. What a resource. Fantastic. Yeah. Again, that is the, uh, what was it's, that called? It's the Adaptive, the Adaptive Housing, Housing Grant, and yes. that, again, is on the yes. website. Yep. Great. Yep. So that's wonderful. Um, a couple of other grants that we have available, um, Field of Interest Funds. Okay. Um, we've had a Kiwana Union Township endowment fund okay what that is is basically a small version of our community funds mm -hmm. it is a fund that makes grants specifically to projects in Kiwana and Union Township okay. areas and so organizations apply for those grants we have a group of local citizens from that community that make the selections on where those grants okay. go um, we've actually been granting from this I think 2014 was the first year that wow. we granted okay. Um, last year, we were fortunate to be able to create a similar fund in Liberty Township. Oh, you so were. Liberty and Fulton now have a fund. <laughs> nice. um, so we have grant applications available for, for both of those projects. That's great. And those are those are location specific. Those are location specific, and part of our goal is really to be able to have folks from each of those communities. Ideally, we want to have one of those for every township. Sure. So if, if viewers are interested in talking about something for their township. Mm -hmm. Um, we'd love to talk about that, but Great it, it's neat to see how local citizens can say, hey, these are the needs that we really have now and get involved in that. Like and it. also, sometimes we have folks from communities that they say, I haven't really been involved in one thing. I've been involved in everything in the community. So how do I give back to all of that? Yep. So sometimes this is a landing spot for donations where if somebody says, I don't want to restrict this 
just to one thing. Mm -hmm. Let's help support the community as a whole. So and, and yet keeping it uh, keeping, keeping the it focus local. local. Yes, that's great. So the community they they live and work and play mm -hmm. in, and so that's. Um, another opportunity, but we have those grant applications available on our website. Fantastic. Um, again, a few hundred to a few thousand dollar projects, okay. um, and those applications are actually due May 6th okay. to us. So a little bit more time yep. um, on that. But um, And this is, again, is all under the grants, under Fulton County, yes, yep. on your website, yep. nicf.org. Yes. You'll yes. have that memorized by the time we're done. <laughs> I almost have it memorized. <laughs> so... So those are some of the grant opportunities that we have available. Fantastic. Um, one thing I did want to mention, of course, you probably heard about the matching opportunity that the Lilly Endowment has offered to Fulton County. Yes. Um, for our community funds, which are the funds that make things like community support grants, mm -hmm. impact grants. Mm -hmm. This last year we were fortunate to be able to give out pop-up grants. Mm -hmm. All of that comes from those funds. Um, and they offered a two-for-one match wow. for gifts to community funds. Okay. Um, Fulton County is eligible for five hundred thousand dollars in wow. matching from Lilly Endowment. Wow. So they, again, folks, that's on the two-to-one. We have to give how much? They give us how much? So, so we, they we are eligible for five hundred thousand from Lilly. We have to raise two hundred and fifty thousand okay. dollars here locally to get the five hundred. To get the five hundred. Okay. Um, they announced this program in October. Okay. And as of now, we've raised over one hundred and seventy-seven thousand of our two hundred fifty thousand dollar. You are busy it's, over there. It's <laughs> we just like I said, we have a generous community. Yeah. We've had a lot of individuals. Corporation, businesses, um, really wide community support. It's, well, I was looking at the list the other day and looking at the number of donors that have given, and it's neat to see how all of these small contributions add up to big dollars. Oh, they do. So, so what's going to happen with that is the neat thing is when Lily provides the five hundred thousand and we have the two hundred fifty thousand. That's going to turn into about thirty thousand dollars every single year. Additional grants that we can yeah. make. Um, in the community. So 30000 goes a long way. It, it really, really does. It does. And, and when we think about that is only for Fulton County things. We don't have to compete with other communities right. for that money. Right. We know that that's going to be spent here and it's going to continue to, to be great. spent here in the future. So, so what I wanted to talk about a little bit today are some of the past impact grants that we've given. Excellent. We've talked about raising some money and yeah. talked about grants, but let's talk about a little bit of the history that we've done. Sure. So we actually started... Um, 2011, we started a conversation internally and said, you know, we have a lot of organizations that come to us and ask, we can, so, we can work on this problem if we have this much. Mm -hmm. And our group started thinking about, well, if they can fix the problem with that, that's good. But a lot of times organizations are asking for the bare minimum. Mm -hmm. What if we asked organizations, okay, come and tell us what you would really like to have. Mm -hmm. Give us don't your just put a band mm -hmm. Yeah, don't just put a Band-Aid on this. Mm -hmm. Let's see what it would look like to address this in a big problem. Okay. And so the idea of impact grants, grants that make a significant impact on an issue, mm -hmm. came up. So 2012, we started awarding those. Um, and it was interesting to see organizations when they would come to us and say, well, if we ask for this much... Are we going to have to negotiate so that we can get what we need? Mm. Um, we try not to do that. It's it's more of a conversation. We've actually had organizations that have come and asked us for funding, and our committee sits down and looks at it and says, you know what, we don't think you're asking for enough. Really? Can you also include something else that we've seen, whether it be through a site visit mm -hmm. or conversation? Um, that doesn't always happen, but sometimes um, we like to we like to leave that process open so that if that organization hasn't thought of something, we can go back and say, we'd like you to also include this. So That's awesome. 2012, we were actually able to award our first two impact grants. What were they for? Um, the Fulton County Animal Center. Okay. Of course, a, an organization that has done such great things. <laughs> um, they now have a fence around the facility yes, that was do. part of that grant, and they were able to complete a new adoption building. Yes. Um, if you'd been out there before they completed it, they had very limited space did a wonderful job with the space that they have, they but do. now they have a new facility where um, I just enjoy going in there and seeing the dogs <laughs> and petting the cats and getting everybody riled up. Yeah. And, um, my family has had the opportunity to adopt an animal, also take 
advantage of some of their low cost spay and neuter programs. Yes. Um, but they do such a wonderful job. They so that, do. You're preaching to the choir here on this one. Yeah. Um, we just picked up our 10th animal from there. Uh, we now have eight cats and two dogs. And, Congratulations. Uh, that's, a, that's not just in the past week. That's been over a number of years. Yeah. But I've been a part of that, you know, yes. um, and to see the work that's gone into that from the community members, to see the community support that went behind it. Yes. Um, and there are other communities that really could use the exact same assistance and they're not getting it. Yes. But here in Fulton County, we took care yeah. of that and uh, that's just a great thing. So and impact grant, yes. that was 2000. That was 2012. Okay. Um, we also had another impact grant that year that really, it's interesting how things come together. Okay. Um, the Kiwana Community Food Pantry yes. had been in existence for a number of years. Um, it was a group of local churches really collaborated on that, but the facility was located in a upstairs room in the United Methodist Church, mm -hmm. um, a very small room. Of course, you can imagine if you have volunteers having to carry food up and down stairs. Yes. Um, they had very limited freezer or refrigerator space. Mm -hmm. um, they had approached us about a grant. In the process, things came together. They had the opportunity to purchase at a very reduced rate a building from a local corporation. Nice. Um, they were so they had didn't know that opportunity when they start when we started the grant process. Uh -huh. A couple weeks after they were starting the process, they called us and said, "Hey, we have this great opportunity. We'd like to give you some details." So we talked through that and worked with them on um, some things about their organization, sure. the facility, and were able to grant them thirty thousand dollars to help purchase and furnish their new facility. No so kidding. now they've gone from an upstairs room that was small, mm -hmm. having to carry carry supplies up and downstairs, to a ground level ADA accessible building nice. that literally has an overhead garage door that they can back up to about ten <laughs> feet from their shelves and pull things right off of a truck, stock them on the shelves, unload pallets. Fantastic. Um, Completely and, efficient. And they point. have yeah. they have I would estimate tripled to quadrupled the size, wow. the amount of offerings. Um, last time I was in there, I think they had three or four freezers where they're wow. able to offer, That's great. offer meat and supplies. And it's been wonderful to see how that organization has really changed Absolutely. Um, as a whole and been able to serve so many more people. Oh, so, that's fantastic. So, so that's the Kiwana Food Pantry. That was the Kiwana Food Pantry. Great. So 2013, yeah. um, we had an application from the Fulton County Council on Aging. Okay. Um, they had some needs as far as um, their restroom facilities mm -hmm. and also the kitchen. If you've been to the to the community center mm -hmm. over the lunch hour during the week, you see how many people are served. Mm -hmm. um, lunches there, they had some kitchen facilities that really were not even close to adequate. Okay, um, They were able to do some renovations there. We were able to grant them $25,000 yeah. in 2013 to help help renovate their kitchen, make it more user-friendly, be able to serve more folks. That's great. Um, and then 2014 and 15, we had the opportunity to actually give a grant each year to the same organization, mm -hmm. the Akron Youth League. Yes. Um, they've done some wonderful things. <laughs> um, 2014, we gave them a grant for $33,000. Um, they needed some facility upgrades. Mm -hmm. They had some old fencing that was in disrepair. Um, some of their concession facilities were not meeting the needs that they had. Um, if you remember a few years ago, they had dugouts that were on the, on the baseball diamond that were below ground, yep. which was kind of cool. <laughs> I remember seeing dugouts like that as a kid. It was neat, thing. yeah. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. But when you're an adult, you start thinking about, well, there's things like tripping yep. concerns. Yep. They also had some drainage issues. So yep. if it rained before a game... The dugouts were unusable, right. so they were able to fill that in, um, add some batting cages, yep. so now they can basically double their practice facilities, yep. um, add some upgrades, bleachers um, at the softball diamonds, mm -hmm. um, some additional storage, and, and just do some wonderful things there. Great stuff. 2015, we were able to actually grant them an additional $43,000 wow. to continue some renovations. Mm -hmm. So. Um, if you haven't been to Akron to check out the Youth League facilities, mm -hmm. if you have time this summer, I'd encourage you to, to go down there or we can say as seen on Channel 4. <laughs> I'm sure right. you guys will probably be broadcasting some we, games. but We did, Brian. Um, and, you know, one of the things that folks don't think about when 
you hear that uh, the Akron Youth League got thirty three thousand dollars, and then they got another you know money to renovate the year after. The thing you don't think about is the impact that that has not only to Akron but to the region. Yes, we filmed. I know that because I called every one of them myself. Thirty two games over there for a town and country tournament yeah. that brought in people from all over North Central yeah. Indiana, and. Um, we, number one, we wouldn't have been able to film it on the old facilities, so the yeah. new facilities helped a little yeah. bit there. But it was that hometown feel. You had yeah. bleachers in the park yeah. filled with folks. And yeah, you, you have some pride. You and do. That's, and that's really our goal with these impact And grants. money. It's it for, brings some money it, into the community, it does. too. But just that idea of, hey, we have a nice facility, and Absolutely. we want to display this. And, yep. um, it, it's fun when we get to play over there personally yeah. and and families are saying, wow, this is a really nice facility and they've yeah. done a really good job. Yeah. And just that, that pride yeah. in the facility and, and a great job that that group has done Ever, with, absolutely, absolutely. with the Youth League. So. And, and you guys, with, with your, your help, but when we say your help, it's the community who it helped is. make that happen. Yes, that's what makes this possible is that's that we've great. had donors that have given. So Excellent. 2016, we actually had the opportunity to give to two organizations. Okay. Um, the Manitow Training Center. Yes. Um, they were in an old industrial facility mm -hmm. that it worked for their needs, but it was far from ideal. Right. Um, they needed some things like some lighting upgrades, um, some mechanical upgrades. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that I noticed when we went on a site visit there was just the level of noise. Mm. The building was not designed to be a learning environment or really have a good conversation is designed as an industrial facility mm -hmm. so they were able to make some renovations that helped calm down the noise also okay. improve the lighting um, some more efficient things so so future bills are reduced mm -hmm. um, but it's just been a wonderful transition to see how much better they can serve their clients yeah. um, with that so and that's one of the gems of fulton county we don't get into is. enough um, you know the special needs that exist in our society a lot of them just get shuffled under the table or bounce yeah. from organization to organization and they never land anywhere. Fulton County is very blessed to have something like the Manitoba Training yes. Center. And that's, and that's one of the organizations, again, a very encouraging, if, if you need some encouragement, yeah, just right. stop by. Don't feel good about life, you, go there. You will leave there because everybody's happy, yeah. enjoying, interacting. It, it's a wonderful facility that's and great. wonderful organization. So, Fantastic. Um, 2016, we also were able to grant to Matthew's Market. Yes. Um, they've Talk about a, a food pantry. They've done My a goodness. wonderful job. Yes. Um, so part of what we were able to grant for that was to help them purchase a refrigerated transportation vehicle. Great. So if you see a white van around town with a refrigeration unit on the top of it, um, they were able to be able to accept more supplies yes. now. There's some things that you can't transport right. if you don't have refrigerated transportation. So that has expanded their capabilities sure. to be able to transport things. Um, also part of that grant was help other food pantries um, do some more. Okay. So like now they're working with the Kiwana Food Pantry to okay. offer them some additional things. Um, one need that they were seeing was they had a lot of folks from the Macy area okay. using Matthew's Market. And they said, well, this is great, but... If you're on a limited income, you may not have transportation to right. be able to get from Macy to Rochester. Right. So they were able to work with some local folks in the Macy area and That's actually great. establish a Macy food pantry that has grown and, and really been able to support itself. So they, now, now they too. have a facility so, down there that they can go down and stop. Yes, yeah, so, that, so that they can have it in the community. Fantastic. If somebody doesn't have transportation, they can literally walk to the food pantry. Yeah. Um, so that's been wonderful to see how that that's organization great. has not only grown and served um, so many people, mm -hmm. um, the last the last number I heard they serve over 500 families a, a month, month. Wow. and that's just an incredible thing to that be is. able to see. So, that is. Um, but they they've grown, and and I want to thank everybody out there um, for Matthew's Market specifically. What a great thing that they've done! It takes a lot of people to keep yes. that organized to serve yes. that many families. Um, there is a lot of minutia that comes to being a food bank, if you will. Yeah. Um, there are all sorts of regulations that go with it. You talked about, hey, we've got you know a truckload of turkeys, but we can't get them down to yes. Rochester because yeah. we have to use refrigerated. Yeah. And again, it's regulation, but it's to keep you safe. Um, and to know that the community just keeps dumping 
more and more resource into this to help. Yes. And that's great yeah. because you're elevating the the uh, folks in Fulton County and as they continue to elevate they continue yeah. they begin to contribute more and more and yes. more and it just becomes a wonderful yeah. cycle. And Not it, a vicious cycle. Yes. A wonderful and cycle. And needs are addressed. Absolutely. And it's a wonderful resource to have here. So. Good stuff. I am patting you on the back so much yeah. and you're not even done with this list. What else? <laughs> well we, we we have the last one that we'll talk about today. Okay. Um, the Times Theater. Yes. Um, of course that's been a project that has ongoing conversation. Mm -hmm. Um, but in 2018, we're actually able to award them two grants, okay. um, one for $34,000 to help Excellent. with um, just some of the basic things like getting a plan together. One thing that has to happen is they have to have an architect involved to figure out, first of all, what can we actually do with this facility. Okay. Um, so they're in the process of working with that architect, getting designs drawn nice. out and kind of laying out some of the options that they can use that facility for. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's that's one impact grant that we awarded them. And architects are not cheap. They are not, um, but they are necessary. <laughs> they are necessary. If you, if you I mean, it's an old building. Mm -hmm. There's there's some renovation yeah. needs. Um, just some, they're trying to change it. If you haven't been into it, they've opened it up. Yeah. There's a wonderful stage. Yeah. Um, just some great opportunities. But the have first you performed on the stage? Yet? I have not okay, yet. Okay, Brian's so. a musician. <laughs> I can't wait to see you so up there. We'll, Sorry. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> but they're doing great yes, things. Yes, they are. Um, and it's it's not an easy thing. You can't, it's you not. know, it's, it's even a if you were a company project. with millions of dollars, it would still take a lot of yes. time to renovate this. Yes, because it's, it's um, it, like I said, it's an old facility, mm -hmm. but they have some wonderful opportunities. Absolutely. And they're they're trying to figure out what all can we do with yeah. this. And then the other, the other thing, of course, big news recently that the Rochester Downtown Partnership and the... City of Rochester was awarded a MSRP grant yes. to help with some facade work. Congratulations to that organization. I know a lot of people Absolutely. Um, have worked very hard on that. These are the um, Main Street renovation projects. You've heard yes. Harry Webb and others talk about these. Brian, of course, is in the mix of all of those conversations. Yeah. And so we were able to award um, 25000 great additional dollars to the theater portion of that project mm -hmm. to help with the match okay. for that grant, but also specifically to help with some of the facade renovations at the theater. Of yes. course. And, um, we have a wonderful marquee. I mm -hmm. drive past it every day. Yeah. Um, it's something that stands out in our downtown. I look yes. forward to seeing what they do with that, but also yeah. the front of the facility yeah. um, needs some, need some attention. Mm -hmm. And so this grant will help um, them be able to do some renovations there as well. So. That's fantastic. And, and again, they're doing great work. I can't wait to see how this all ends with the with yeah. the theater. I think it's going to be a destination for folks yes. from north central Indiana and beyond to come to at some yes. point. But it's gonna take some time. So Yeah, and our our downtown is getting busier all the time. If you haven't been through it in yeah. afternoons, evenings, um, sometimes it's hard to find a place to park. It and is. this is just another opportunity yeah. to enjoy something in our downtown Absolutely. and take some pride in that. Absolutely. So some wonderful things happening. So, so that's a little bit of the snapshot of some of the impact that's grants great. that we've been able to give out. Um, right now we've we've gone actually 2016 mm -hmm. we said what would it look like to not have any grant application deadlines mm -hmm. and we've we've gone away from deadlines for our community support grants which are our few hundred to fifteen twenty thousand dollar grants mm -hmm. and also our impact grants actually the impact grants the first the first step in that is a letter of intent okay just telling us about the project okay um, and from there we start the conversation great and so our our hope is that organizations are out there are dreaming big are saying this would solve the problem but this would really cover everything mm -hmm. what what's your big idea mm -hmm. what's your what's your ultimate goal with this and that's our hope and that's part of the conversation that we have so that's fantastic. Um, so thank you to everybody donors yeah. obviously we wouldn't be here without donors sure. um, but for also the organizations that are doing these projects coming up with this ideas and saying hey somebody should do this and maybe we're the somebody that can address this problem amen so, to that so I think wonderful. that everything you've discussed today, all of these dollars, all of these grants, the scholarships, they have a tangible impact on yes. Fulton County. Yeah. Um, and that's that's very important to note. Um, a lot of things happen in the ethereal. Oh, we need this or we need that or 
foundation of our building or whatnot. But the things we're talking about here impact us every yeah. day. Hence the name Impact Grants. Yes. But they really sincerely do, and they make this a better community to live in. So I can't yeah. thank you enough. Yeah. Um, and as you know, RTC is here to help promote yeah. any of that stuff we yes. can for you. So keep well, that we're, up. We're, we're, we're fortunate to have the community that we do have. Yes. Because a lot of times we don't realize what we do have compared to other communities. Absolutely. The grass so, is always yeah. greener, but I'm telling you, as a guy who's lived in some of those other places, yeah. it's just as brown. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Rochester's yeah, yeah. got a lot of green grass, yeah. and, and it's good people doing good things, people who care. Um, and, you know, I understand it's your job, but you put so much heart behind what you're doing. It is sincere. You and Jay and Corinne and Allison and everybody over there. Yeah. It is um, your driving passion for the community that helps coalesce all well, of these it's, things. It's a very encouraging thing to be involved in. We have a very good board yeah. um, that supports us with ideas and um, is really are really ambassadors for our organization. So yeah. it, it really does take the community as a whole to be able to do these types of things. Yeah, it takes a village, right? It does. <laughs> it does. Anything else for you today, Brian? That's, Excellent. we just encourage folks, if you have ideas mm -hmm. or questions about something the foundation does, if you have an idea for a project, that's a, that's the way a lot of these things happen. Okay. Somebody just says, hey, I have an idea. What do you think about this? Yeah. Um, oftentimes, we not only can provide some funding, but also some ideas as far as, oh, we've heard other folks talking about yeah. this, um, make connections between groups. Yep. Um, we try and play that facilitator whenever we can. That's um, great. Because you and do also, have a lot of knowledge, and you, yeah, you do have and, a lot of irons and a lot of fires. So. And, and we try and work with organizations, because a lot of times you have organizations doing projects that are all volunteer, and yep. so we can say, hey, we've seen this happen before, and these are some of the things that maybe you should think about, That's or smart. issues we've seen come up, or have you thought about doing doing this type of thing? Mm -hmm. So we, we just we try and be add knowledge to a project when we can, or mm -hmm. ask questions and, and help volunteers do good things so that's that's excellent well again you're watching uh rtc tv4 we've got brian johnson from the community foundation here in fulton county and uh brian we're going to do this once a month now and uh, looking forward to that folks i want to encourage you reach out um it's nicf.org and uh boy it's just great things happening here in fulton county I want to encourage you to be a part of it whether you're one of those changers rainmakers uh yeah you know, activators, whatever your role in all of this is, please step up, give them a call. Happy to talk to you and uh, see what we can do to make this even better community. I appreciate you having me today. It's my pleasure. We'll see you next time here on RTC TV4. Thanks again for watching.